In today's podcast, we're talking about the role that vulnerability and courage play in unleashing our authentic self as a leader and embracing the authenticity that we see in other people. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you are and however you're coming to the podcast today, I'm so glad you are here. Welcome. Uh, If you are new to the podcast, welcome. Uh, So excited that this podcast continues to grow and spread all around the world. So uh, welcome. Hope you dive in, uh, check out some old episodes. There's so many great episodes, uh, interviews that I've done with other uh, thought leaders from around the world, and also some micropods of great topics that I think will add value and contribute to your journey. So we got over 100 and, I don't know, 40, 50 episodes by now, which is uh, great and growing all the time. So uh, welcome. If you are an OG, one of the original uh, listeners to the podcast, welcome back. So glad this continues to add value and contribute to where you are in your journey. So uh, my commitment to you always is that this will be a place for you to step back, for you to get away from, um, you know, your normal routines in life, in work, and step back and think, and hopefully be uh, filled with some some thoughts that uh, breathe a little oxygen into you and help you think about you know, calibrating your thermostat for the person, the leader uh, that you're hoping to be in the world and uh, contributing to the culture that you are trying to create. I've never been more convinced of this than uh, than ever, that uh, authentic leadership is needed more than ever in the world right now. And certainly we need teams, organizations, uh, groups of humans of any kind that are bringing out the best in each other, creating compelling cultures that people want to be a part of, and uh, helping to serve missions greater than ourselves. So, so glad you're here. Uh, before we dive into today's topic, if you'll do me the quick uh, favor and uh, hit five stars, of course. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast already, please do so. But yeah, where, however you're listening to this, if you will uh, hopefully rate it five stars and uh, you know whether I like it or not, that's what the algorithms want us to do, and that's the way they reward us. So if you will uh, do that, I really, really appreciate it. Also, if you'll leave a nice review, a positive review, that's how other people can find it, and these messages can be shared further in the world. And then also, anytime you share it on social media or with your networks or just you know recommend it to other uh, people of your peers or in your uh, organization or your network that helps it uh, spread, and that's obviously the purpose of this is to help uh, spread some good mojo, some good uh, content. This is all free, so it hopefully it moves out into the world and connects with people. So thank you for doing that. So today on today's podcast, we're talking about the role that vulnerability and courage play in unleashing our authentic self as a leader, and embracing the authenticity that we see in other people. But let's take a break. Let's pause for a second, and we'll be right back with today's episode. Hey, everyone. I wanted to take a quick minute to remind you about one of my favorite days of the year that is coming up, Thermostat Cultures Live on Friday, November 4th, 2022. This is a powerful day of development that I host and an opportunity for us all to step back take a deep breath, and calibrate our thermostats for the road ahead in our leadership roles and the cultures we are creating. This year, this is a hybrid event, and there are limited seats available for the in-person, very cool VIP experience in Columbus, Ohio, and there are also online virtual seats available for those who want to engage from a remote location. As always, I'll be joined by amazing other thought leaders from around the globe, and it'll be a day you won't want to miss. 
Visit thermostatculturelive.com to learn more and to reserve your seat or seats for your team. All right. Welcome back. Uh, uh, The first thing I'll say before we launch into today's uh, topic is just another quick thank you to everybody. Uh, As you know, my latest book, Breathing Oxygen, was just released in August and uh, has gotten a tremendous response. Uh, And so I'm just saying a quick thank you to everyone out there. Uh, I'll keep saying this, but launching anything in the world today requires courage and vulnerability and uh, also, uh, which is the topic for today, uh, but also it requires other people that uh, believe in the message and hopefully believe in the messenger and and want to help amplify messages in the world. So thank you for everybody who's been uh, you know reading it and sharing it with other people and kind of breathing good oxygen into the people around you. Uh, I appreciate it. On the last uh, podcast episode, we talked about uh, if you didn't listen to it, I encourage you to go back. But we talked about kind of redefining what the word toughness really means from not only a human perspective, from a leadership perspective, and certainly with all the uncertainty and the challenges and the obstacles that we are facing and have been facing over the world uh, over the last couple of years, that uh, it just requires, uh, you know, part of a, a requisite skill uh, for leading in the world of uncertainty and challenge is grit and resolve and, and being able to, in the midst of these challenges, name them, but still take a step forward and and bring people along with you. So if you didn't hear that, I encourage you to go back and listen to that episode um, because how we see and how we think about this stuff, leadership and culture, uh, it impacts our actions, our behaviors, but it also impacts everybody in the culture and the space around us. So for today's episode, uh, I want to talk about, I want to I want to have a little fun with uh, a movie image and, and an example that uh, has meant something to me, and, and this image has really stayed with me for many years now, um, but also I think is, is just a great illustration of what we face as humans, uh, let alone leaders, and certainly what we can then be a part of welcoming in the culture's uh, around us. So I want to talk about the movie, The Greatest Showman, The Greatest Showman, which is, uh, you know, a movie that I just uh, really enjoy and have, um, you know, really actually with my daughter. Uh, it's been one of our favorite movies. Uh, it's a musical. So I'm not always the, the you know, a, a musical fan. I, I like musicals, but not uh, all musicals. So it's not that I'm a musical junkie or anything. But um it, it is one that, that I found myself just uh, being drawn to, I think, part of it because it's, it's based on, obviously, a true story, um, which I'll get into here in just a second. Um, but also, uh, you know, the songs are, are good. The actors are, are fantastic. And so it, uh, it's one that has really stayed with me. But if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to see The Greatest Showman. But it's, uh, the, the Greatest Showman is the t- 2017. Um, it's a biographical biogra- Graphical, wow, a biographical, sorry, biographical musical drama. And it stars Hugh Jackman, uh, amazingly talented. If you, again, Hugh Jackman, Zach Efron, Zendaya, who uh, this was kind of launched Zendaya onto the scene and, and now has become, and certainly many, many other uh, wonderful people. But uh, it features nine original songs, and, and the, you know, it's based on the story and the life of P.T. Barnum, you know, the famous showman and entertainer who created the Barnum and Bailey Circus. And and also it tells the story of the lives and the stars that were part of the original attractions of the of the the Barnum and Bailey circus. Um, And certainly it's a it's a it's based on a true story, but it takes some some liberties of of telling the story. But it's really entertaining. And, And the movie itself is great. But what was so interesting to me and what I loved is after seeing the movie, uh, there was a YouTube video that was floating around about when the movie was still in the process of, of being, you know, hadn't even been filmed yet and was in the process what they refer to as being greenlit. And so if you don't know what that means, it's the it's kind of 
uh, the time before the movie has actually been made, where they have the script, they have the actors, they have, you know, the plan to go make the movie, but then they gather to, to do a little rehearsal and run through of this, especially in this case with the musical, the songs, and they, they do this in front of a potential, you know, the studio and the investors that are ultimately the people are then going to make the, the decision to green light the movie, give them the official kind of go ahead to go now go make the movie. Or they're going to going to say, you know what, I think we we need to, to kind of squash this and go a different direction. So it, it oftentimes for for uh, can be a stressful time uh, because everybody uh, who's uh, involved in the film is certainly hoping to get the green light and the go ahead to go make the movie and, and everything that they have been dreaming about and putting uh, their time and effort into this. And so on YouTube, they captured this moment of when this movie was was in this kind of green lighting process and the day when they were going to make the final decision to green light this movie where all the actors had gathered. And they were singing the songs that would become the anthems for the movie, and the investors and the studio folks would make you know were watching and they would make their final decision on whether they were going to green light this movie so that they could go ma- make it and one of the actors, uh, a little known actor, Kiala settle Kiala settle uh, was a very shy, nervous uh, you know unknown kind of actor. And she was very uh, noticeably nervous to sing the song that really was going to be the main anthem for the whole movie call that that is named "This Is Me." The name of the song is "This Is Me," and this was, this was going to become like the main anthem of the movie. And so a lot is riding on her performance and, and and certainly her role in bringing this to life. And so the pressure you can see the nerves in this YouTube video that f- fortunately they they filmed ahead of time. You know you can see her own insecurity. Um, and she, you know, part of it is is the um, the director of the film was encouraging her and talking to her like, hey, in this you know room filled with, with people, she was standing behind a music stand, and literally almost you could see it as if she was hiding behind the music stand. And again, if you haven't seen this video, I'm, I'm we're going to put it in the show notes so that you can go watch it because you need to see it. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you, but you really need to watch it because visually and hearing the and feeling the energy in the room is really what you need to do. But but I'll do my best to explain it. But she's standing behind this music stand. And everybody in the room, and, and the director is encouraging her, hey, when you sing this, you're going to have to go for it. you got to move beyond outside of the music stand. you got to come out. you got to own this song. And you've got to be the one to just bring it to life. But you can tell she's scared. She's nervous. And so as the song starts and you watch the video, you can't help but get goosebumps as you watch Kiala kind of begin to to sing this and she at first she's behind the music stand and and she's again you can tell she's building up the courage and then all of a sudden when she gets to the to the very powerful part of the song where she you know she belts out the words I am brave I am proof this is who I'm meant to be this is me I'm not scared to be me. I make no apologies. This is me. And as she's doing it, she she steps out behind from behind the music stand and out into the the center of the room where she's surrounded by all these people and she's saying these words. She's singing them with such passion. I am brave. I am proof. This is who I'm meant to be. This is me. I'm not scared to be me. I make no apologies. This is me. You watch the her courage just growing as she steps beyond the music stand and, and, and you know, goes for it in the way that the director had been urging her to do in front of all her peers and all the studio reps. The energy, the passion, the spirit is just palpable in the room. And there's this other great moment that that as she makes the courageous move to move beyond the stand and come out and really own the song, of then there's this part where then that you know the other actors in the room, it comes to the point in the song where it's their time to 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 chime in and to kind of join her as voices. And the chorus of the actors chime in with you know, look out because here I come. And you can hear the echoes of all the the other uh 
you know, actors. And every time th- th- that they do this, I-, I get these goosebumps because it's just it's an amazing thing that as she has the courage to step out in front of the of, you know, the music stand and own the experience, her teammates, the other people around her then feel that energy, build off that energy, and then come to her to support her and say, look out because here we come and we're with you. And again, the vulnerability, the the the, the courage to share this. And at the very end of the song, there's this amazing, and again in this video, there's the conclusion of the song is, is when the, the music gets real soft again and she's walking over and she's so emotional as she's still singing the song. And she slowly like... Hugh Jackson, who Jackson, who is or Jackman is 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 sitting there, and he, he, all the people around are visibly emotional, and he reaches out and grabs her hand one final time, and she, you know, belts out again with such passion. This is me, and the place explodes, and they go back into the to the chorus. Chills, goosebumps, vulnerability plus courage to share her gifts, and to go for it. So, again, I'm not telling you just because I think the video is neat and because uh, it's 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 an entertaining movie, but I'm sharing this because it was just this palpable moment that I believe speaks louder than just a cool video. As people, let alone leaders, you know, we're all being invited to move beyond the music stand that we're in our own life and our own career, that oftentimes it's easier to stand behind the music stand and, in fact, keep a little bit of space between us and other people, to, to, to hide a little bit, to stay behind it and, and to kind of protect ourselves. And yet what we're called to do oftentimes is to move beyond that music stand, to move out from behind it and to, and to walk out into the ring and to share our gifts and to be authentically us, that what we're asked to be as leaders is not to be what somebody else wants us to be. It's not just to be the robotic leader that somebody else told us to be. It's to become us and to authentically share the gifts that we have to share. And not who you think you're supposed to be, but again, authentically you. Who is it that you want to be? Who is it that you are at your core? This is me. And my observations uh, always, but certainly over the last two and a half years, has been that organizations are thirsty for this these days, that we need, again, authentic leaders that have that kind of vulnerability and courage to say, hey, this is me, and to step out and to show that kind of authentic leadership. But it also is a place for us to be creating these kind of compelling cultures that welcome other people and invite other people's authenticity and where we are then joining in to celebrate and be that chorus of supportive voices for a diverse set of people to say, we want you to be you and together we can be a chorus that sings a song with more passion and more effectiveness and for a mission greater than ourselves when we truly all bring our gifts to the experience, authentically us, and are are willing to be vulnerable and have the courage to really go for it. We have the opportunity to embrace and approach our teams and the cultures that we're creating by honoring this kind of authenticity and courage for ourselves, but also for the people around us to to share your gifts and to really be uh, create those kind of environments for other people. And we know that leaders right now in the world who understand this and teams and organizations that are committed to helping their people kind of breathe in this kind of ox- oxygen where, hey, let's come together to, to, to uh, you know, chase and, be, and, and, and aim for and strive for this mission that's greater than ourselves. But let's bring our whole selves. Let's bring our, 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 our true authentic selves to that mission. And let's, by the way, let's see the strengths and the, and the diverse abilities in other people and bring them to the table too. Not only because it's the right thing to do, because uh, hopefully that we, we should do that, uh, that, you know, that's enough just because it's the right thing to do, but also because it helps our performance expand. The passion and the, 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 the singing of that song coming out from behind 
the music stand is just better than us hiding and trying to stay behind the stand. So uh, uh, it helps our performance expand. And these leaders, teams, and organizations that realize this, and, and they realize that we need to continuously be removing obstacles and encouraging and engaging with our people and our teams and our employees and our staff to help them feel comfortable and bring their gifts to step beyond the music stand and share their voice to this chorus and to support each other along the way. When we do this, it improves everyone's sight lines. It helps everyone breathe a little easier, and it ultimately makes our performance and our pursuit of that mission better. So healthy cultures and these kind of cultures of courage and vulnerability and authenticity they don't they aren't something that just this naturally happen there's a process for how we create that and that we build that kind of mindset and thinking and and show people that this is how we do it and we we empower other people when they see our example of setting that temperature for the people around us this mindset can kind of can guide our actions and our interactions. So for this week, I want to leave you with some questions to ponder for for your own life and your own work. In what ways do you need to move beyond the music stand in your life and career? In what metaphorical ways might you be in your own life or in your own work kind of standing behind the music stand, hiding a little bit, staying behind it, keeping a little distance from the people or, or really going for something in what ways are you are you kind of hiding and, and, and do you need to maybe move beyond that music stand in your life and your career? What examples of vulnerability and courage that around you have moved you? What are examples of other people that you've watched them to be vulnerable and courageous that have, have moved and inspired you? And what practices would help you breathe differently to practice this type of vulnerability and courage? I hope you think about those questions this week, and I hope it adds value. And, and, and I hope you hit uh, in the show links, uh, the show notes, I hope you hit the link and watch the video. And I hope uh, it, it'll bring it to life in a much better way than even I just described. But I hope you remember that this is me. And, this, and, and what is that for you? This is you. And you're making no apologies. And to bring it to the table, to bring your gifts and share it with other people and encourage that in the people around you. Because that's when we will make magic. That's when powerful things will happen in our relationships and our work. So uh, the last thing I'll say today before I wrap up today's podcast is, again, thank you to everybody who continues to support Breathing Oxygen. Uh, If you haven't gotten the book, I invite you. uh, People keep asking, how can they help? Uh, Order the book. Read the book. I mean, those are the things. When you write a book, you want people to actually read it. So I hope you do that. And then, uh, you know... Uh, share it. If, 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 if it resonates with you, share it and, and, and really uh, give it to other people. We're about to enter the holiday season where I hope you share it and all those kind of things and, and, and share it with other people. And, and uh, you know, that's the way that it spreads. And then reviews. That's the other way that, that it helps spread around the world. So Amazon reviews or whatever platform uh, you use it, hopefully you give it five stars and leave a nice review. Those are all the ways in which it, it spreads out in the world. If you have other ideas that you want to share with us, we're all ears. There have been many organizations that have wanted to get bulk copies and do that kind of thing for their team and the organization. If you want to do that and try to find that at a discount rate, we can try our best to help you with that through the publisher and, dist- and distributors. So email us at info at jasonvbarger.com and we'll help you out. So again, I'll remind you to breathe in appreciation and gratitude for all that is within your control. Now is a chance for us to positively impact those Uh, around us, within our teams, and on our journey. And every time we breathe good oxygen into people, it gives energy to everybody. And calibrating our own personal thermostat means we've got to have some clarity around who is it that we're trying to be, what is that temperature we're trying to set on our team or within our organization or in our life. And then to remember that it's it's a process to adjust that temperature. None of us are perfect, but the journey to set that temperature means that we have uh, you know, something that we're aiming for and that we're going to be try to be, uh, be those thermostats for the people around us. I hope you'll keep tuning in. And remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostat together.
Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using, and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.